known two wildly different people who suddenly start dating, even though all logic and social norms point to this being an absolute recipe for disaster? This couple appears so ridiculously mismatched that you're genuinely forced to believe they got together just to mess with you. Well, every once in a while, a song featuring two musicians that are basically from different planets hits the charts, and garners a very similar reaction from listeners. What's surprising is just how many of those duos came from completely different backgrounds and genres, with almost no common musical DNA. And even more surprising is how many of those ridiculously conceived collaborations go on to become iconic pieces of pop culture history. I'm Gareth from What Culture Music, and here are eight bizarre music collaborations that were surprisingly successful. Number eight, Moby and Gwen Stefani, Southside. On paper, the teaming of techno geek Moby and the midriff bearing semi punkster Gwen Stefani appeared to be the result of a bored 12 year old playing around with daddy's mixing equipment. Yet somehow it ended up sounding like a real song. A really good song, actually. Considering Stefani hadn't yet done any solo work, it was a risky proposition removing her from the comfort of No Doubt and pairing her with a virtually unknown electronica artist. The timing was simply perfect, however, as Return of Saturn, the follow-up to No Doubt's immensely popular breakthrough album Tragic Kingdom, had just cemented Stefani as the poster girl for rebellious punk. Since this was technically the 90s and the 90s were all about celebrating weirdness for weirdness sake, Southside ate up the US and Canadian charts. And it turned Moby's brand of techno trip hop into the soundtrack of everyone's Y2K fears, making Moby a household name almost overnight. Of course, his name vanished from the commercial public's collective consciousness almost immediately. But still, Southside made more of a mark than it really had any right to. Number 7. Santana and Michelle Branch, The Game of Love Carlos Santana had just tasted success for the first time in decades by pairing up with post-grunge enthusiast and butt-rock pioneer Rob Thomas for the mega-hit Smooth, which subsequently gave him his best-selling album 1999's Supernatural. But aside from more money and fame, what could have inspired the legendary Latin guitarist to sink so low as to team up with every mediocre pop star of the day for his follow-up album Shaman? Oh, it was just more money and more fame. Okay then. Santana seemingly picked through the charts for anyone that kids those days like to bop around to. The results are mixed, with contributions from Dido, Macy Gray, and even the king of butt rock, Chad Kroger. But the most surprisingly wonderful collaboration came from the moderately folksy, mostly cutesy singer-songwriter Michelle Branch. The saccharine ode to the games we play and love, aptly titled The Game of Love, might have been dripping with passionless sentimentality, but it certainly won over the hearts of the listening public as well as the music industry, earning the unlikely duo a Grammy. The guitar playing is tight and on point, and though Michelle Branch isn't much of a powerhouse vocalist, she's certainly a better complement to the light, bluesy Santana sound than Robert Thomas's herniated grunting sounds. Number 6. Jay-Z and Linkin Park, Numb Encore Linkin Park were always more adept at the rap-rock cross-pollination than their peers. That's probably because they actually knew how to incorporate rap. Linkin Park had an honest-to-goodness MC in Mike Shinoda. With that credibility at play, it wasn't so crazy to think that a mashup with Jay-Z could actually work. Two rappers on the microphone, treading off lines, complimenting each other's styles? With the slickest hard rock production available? That's gold, I tell ya! But that's not really the way they went with Numb Encore, the only track anyone still remembers from the Collision Course EP. Strangely, Shinoda is relegated to the background here, only occasionally throwing in a yeah or uh-huh, like a second-rate P. Diddy. But the MC swap out worked pretty well, as the song hit every Billboard chart the US had to offer and neared the top 10 in the UK. Number 5. Nelly and Tim McGraw Over and Over whether or not you were a fan of popular country or southern hip-hop in 2004, chances are you probably remember hearing this strangely entrancing duet on the radio, and somehow not being able to turn it off. Up until then, Nelly was best known as the MC with a slight drawl, who wore Air Force Ones and liked it to be hot in here. Whereas Tim McGraw was, well, basically the exact opposite of Nelly. To be fair, this wasn't so much a mixture of country and pop, as it was a straight-ahead pop song with some twang and a good beat. Both musicians toned down their respective roots, compromising on a sound that wouldn't alienate either fanbase. The results made it apparent this was the right call. 
hitting number one on the UK charts. Unfortunately, it also inspired many more rap country hybrids, ultimately claiming responsibility for Nelly's attempt to recreate the magic with Florida Georgia Line down the road. So its legacy is iffy at best. Number four, Foo Fighters and Nora Jones, Virginia Moon. Is there anything Dave Grohl can't actually do? Seriously, the guy apparently has no limitations on his knack for awesomeness. Just listen to this list. Drummer for the biggest alternative band of the 90s. Singer guitarist for the most consistent hard rock group of the millennium. Created a supergroup with members of Queens of the Stone Age and Led Zeppelin. Created a different supergroup that featured Lemmy from Motorhead. And he played drums with comedy rock duo Tenacious D. Given the vast and varied number of epic rock collaborations, as I've just mentioned, you might be surprised to see Grohl's name show up on this list at all. But if you paid attention to the title of this entry, you'll have noticed this particular collaboration isn't with a rock and roll legend, or a rock and roll anything for that matter. It's a bossa nova duet with sweet and soulful Nora Jones. While the Foo frontman was no stranger to softening things up a bit, in 2005 he decided to completely ditch the hard rock formula and go all acoustic for one half of the Foo's double album, In Your Honor. One of those softer tunes, Virginia Moon, found Grohl and Jones trying to out-mellow each other, resulting in a jazzy, lounge-style duet. It's one of the biggest stylistic detours the Foo's have ever taken, and it no doubt pushed the band to take more chances in the future, proving that Foo Fighters don't have to be playing loud guitars with their manhood pushed to the forefront at all times. Number 3. Kanye West and Bon Iver Lost in the World By most accounts, Kanye West's innovative My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy was the bold push-forward hip-hop needed in 2010. Rather than emphasizing hit singles, West aimed for a tight, cohesive album, adding a dash of grandiose to every track along the way. With all its innovations, the one commonality Wes shared with his peers was in piling on the guest vocalists. This album contains more guest stars than an average season of The Simpsons, using them to diversify his sonic palette and turn every song into something crazier than the last. But the most unexpected addition to Yeezy's collaborators was Justin Vernon, the founding member and vocalist of indie folk group Bon Iver. Vernon was best known in 2010 as a softly sung troubadour whose music could easily put a mosh pit to sleep. What was he doing on a Kanye West album, especially one so aggressive and harsh in its sound? To put it bluntly, he was helping make the strongest song on Kanye's strongest album to date. Lost in the World doesn't just borrow Vernon's voice, but also a sample from Bon Iver's Woods. The extensive collaboration recorded in a tiny studio in Hawaii opens with a full 60 seconds of uninterrupted a cappella from Vernon, before erupting with all the thunderous bass West had at his disposal. It goes from melancholic to glorious triumph at the flick of a switch, and is nothing short of a masterpiece. Number 2. Eminem and Dido, Stan Eminem certainly wasn't the first rapper to sample a chorus from a pop song, but Stan can claim bragging rights for incorporating Dido's verse from Thank You so seamlessly that you'd have thought she wrote the part especially for Eminem. Prior to the release of Stan, Eminem was best known as the goofy white rapper who gave himself the nickname Slim Shady, and occasionally rhymed about disposing of his ex-wife's corpse whilst his infant daughter watched. Contrast that with Dido, the angelic voice singer-songwriter who sang about feeling so sad after a breakup that she didn't want to get out of bed, and you've got yourself quite an odd couple. To simply call it a dichotomy would be like calling a minotaur a peculiar thing to see at the supermarket. Yet yeah, without that little bit of Dido softness, four verses about a deranged fan emulating the most grotesque portions of Eminem's discography to impress his idol might have been a bit much for casual listeners to sit through. Alas, Stan went on to become one of the most successful rap songs of all time, climbing to the top of the UK charts, and cementing Eminem's legacy as a serious rap artist with skills beyond rhyming about ripping Pamela Anderson's breasts off. Number 1. Aerosmith and Run DMC Walk This Way Walk This Way quite literally directed legions of hip-hop heads and wannabe rock stars down the path to quality coalescence. The crossover was equal parts rock mojo and hip-hop flow, taking the best and most genuine parts of both worlds, at a time when hair metal was all about the glamour and hip-hop was still finding its footing. Walk This Way not only reinvigorated the dying, lifeless carcass of Aerosmith, but it gave Run DMC the opportunity to leave a huge imprint on the world of hip-hop, defining its sound for years to come. Everything on the song worked, from the legendary vocal back and forth between the two MCs to Steven Tyler's cocksure delivery on the chorus. 
Run DMC would go on to use heavy guitar riffs as a basis for a few other songs, like King of Rock and Tougher Than Leather, but it never worked quite as well as it did on Walk This Way. Still, it made electric guitars popular outside of mainstream rock. The song became bigger than any of the individuals involved. It was a smash on the charts, but this is one instance where those numbers are completely underwhelming when compared to the legacy the song has left behind. To paraphrase Steven Tyler, those boys really knew what they were doing. And that's our list! Know of any other bizarre music collaborations that were surprisingly successful? Let us know all about them in the comments section below, and do not forget to like, share, and click on that subscribe button. I've been Gareth from What Culture Music, thank you very much for watching, and I'm sure I'll see you soon.